I know when I do seminars, I'm pretty in your face, okay? I, I get pretty emotional, I get, uh, it's, it's pretty blunt. It's just bang, 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 a lot of information at you. I throw it bang, 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 and hopefully something sticks. It's only because I actually care, guys. I really care about helping you. It's not, to me, this is not about uh, coming here and, and putting on a seminar and, and putting flashy marketing material up. It's not about that. It's about helping you boys become better players so that you have a better chance of playing professionally, of living your dream. Because the alternative, if you don't get your dream, you have to get a, a plan B. And plan B never feels as good as plan A does. Otherwise, it wouldn't be plan B. So I want to help you get your plan A, basically. So if I come across aggressive, if I come across in your face, it's just because I'm trying to be that voice that maybe I didn't have. And if I had it, maybe it made a difference, maybe it didn't, I don't know. But at least I can try. So this one here, has anyone found themselves in a form slump before? Nothing goes right. You're the same player, you can't work it out. Three weeks ago, you were banging in goals for fun. This week, you can't hit the target to save your life. What's happened here? How does this happen? It's like a scientific uh, mix-up. It doesn't make sense. But one thing that I know for sure is that no player ever goes through perfect form for their whole career. At some point, a player will experience a form slump. Okay? The difference is some players' slumps are a little bit lower than others. So one thing that you have to understand, when you're in a form slump, you have to go back to controlling the things that you can control. And the best thing to get you out of a form slump is to go back to your work ethic as a player. If there's one thing that never fails a player, it never fails. I use this in my own life, not just in football. When things are not going right, I go back to this. Put your head down, your bum up, and start working hard. Grind it out. Don't look over your shoulder. Just start working. Once you start working, things start to fall back into place. So I've put this as the first point that you do when you find yourself in a form slump and everything seems to be going wrong. Start by getting your work ethic right. Start pressing. Start defending. Don't even worry about what you do when you have the ball. Forget it. For the next two games, whatever you do with the ball is a bonus. The only thing you're concentrating on for the next two games is making sure that you tackle every player, that you get behind the ball, that you're pressing, that you're communicating, all of those things. Because if you do that, I, I promise you, the coach is going to say, whoa, can I have another 10 of this player? And what happens is, all of a sudden, your confidence goes back up, and the next thing you know, everything on the ball is happening again. But I can tell you now, work ethic is what kicks it all off. Okay? The next thing that I'd be doing, if I'm in a form slump, is starting to assess my performance. Now, when I say I assess my performance, I don't mean going home and thinking, hmm, I shot well. Did I? Maybe I, um, I tackled okay. No, I'm talking about having a structured assessment template where you go through it and say, yep, I did that. I grade myself out of that. And I've given you one that you can do. But you don't have to use that. Design your own one up. Pick out things that you want to assess yourself on. At the end of the game, give yourself a mark out of 10. The ones you score the lowest on, bang, bingo. They're the things that are holding you back at the moment. So you start to work on them. So start assessing yourself. If you're in a form slump, first thing you do, start working hard and start taking your game apart and assessing yourself. The next thing, get external feedback as well. Because sometimes you might be a little bit biased, you might be even the opposite. You might be a little bit too hard on yourself because you're obviously feeling a bit down. So you need to get someone outside that's not emotionally involved to also say, okay, well, this is what I see. Give them the same assessment form that you've done and say, can you watch my game and grade me on this? So now you can start to get someone else's opinion. If you come and see, okay, they've sort of picked up the same things that I've picked up, now you're on a winner. Now you know, okay, we found the problem here. So external feedback is, is very important, guys. 
So go to a coach. If your parent can be objective, go to them. Most can. Go to a mentor. Go to uh, another parent, someone that you feel comfortable with. Go to a friend, anyone. Just get someone to start marking you. It doesn't even have to be a game. If they want to come to a training session, tell them to watch your training session. It'd be the same thing. Okay? So, number five. This one is a big one if you're starting to get to 16, 17, 18 year olds. Okay? Young ones, still pay attention to this because as you start to go now from SAP program to the Premier Youth, you're going to have to go on trials as well. So this sort of stuff for any player at any age is going to be valuable. Okay. I've asked a lot of clubs, a lot of coaches in Europe, you know, what do you look for in a player when they come to trial? What are your scouts when they're out there looking for players? What are they looking for in a player? And a lot of these things is what they've told me. So I've added one or two of my own things in there, but most of this is straight from the top. Okay? So don't think that, yeah, right, Fabian's saying this, but you know what? I don't think that they're looking for that. No, this is straight from clubs in Europe, what they're looking for. So the first thing when a scout is out there watching a game, they're going to look for is, is this player a team player? And we talked about this before. So if you're wanting to play in the middle of the park and you're being played out on the wing that day and you're not feeling like being a team player, well, you've just blown your chances if there's a scout in there to watch you. And maybe he's there to watch you as a central player, but for that day you're being played out on the wing. You don't want to blow your chances by not being a team player. So a coach or a club will have nothing to do with a player if they're not a team player. So the first thing you want to do, if you've got aspirations of catching the eye of an NYL club this year, for anyone that's in that age group, uh, the younger players, if you've got aspirations of catching the, the eye of a Sydney FC or a Wanderers in the juniors this year, which they're coming out next season, I think, you need to start thinking, when I get on the field, am I portraying a team player? Am I encouraging my teammates? Am I picking them up when they make a mistake? Or does the guy on the sideline see me hammering my teammates so the next 10 minutes that player goes down the, the drain, not up? Or when I touch a player, does that pick him up? Or do I put him down on the ground? So team player is very important. It becomes valuable. If a scout is looking, ooh, this guy here, not only does he make himself lift, he can make four players around him lift. That's a very valuable player. How do you think Argentina won the 86 World Cup? They had a team of nobodies. They had one or two decent players, but that squad had no business winning a World Cup. But Maradona, they say he had the hand of God, but he also had the hand of magic because those players around him, he turned every player into champions and made them think they could beat anyone. So he, that's why this guy was such a valuable player. And he did it at a club as well. He went to a club in Italy that was considered rubbish. So everyone praises Messi, Ronaldo. Yes, they're at the two biggest clubs in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Maradona went to a club that was considered rubbish. Like going to, um, I'm not going to say a club here because I don't want to offend anyone. But he went to a club that was considered, they weren't rubbish, but they were considered to be very mediocre by the Italian media anyway. But he turned them into a champion team. Again, it wasn't coincidental. This guy had an ability to lift players around him. So if you start to put that into your game and have the ability to lift your teammates around you, you start to become a very, very valuable player. Now, this one you can't get around it. And this is when I come back to saying, don't think enthusiasm replaces skill. Your first touch has to be good. It's the, one of the key things they look for. When you get that ball, does it stop right in front of you? Or does it go exactly where you want it to go? Or does it take three touches? Whoop, I better get it back under control. Your first touch is your chance to announce yourself on the stage. I'm here, everyone, and I'm serious. So keep looking at me. Because if that first touch is not good, the scout goes, oh, next. Let me see what else I can see out there. That's good. So your first touch, you need to work on it. Okay? And usually your first touch is something you have to work on on your own. 
Most, most club teams at an at a older level do not spend much time on first touch. They do some passing drills, games, yes, you work on it in a game, but to really work on your first touch, it's something you have to do yourself. You've got to spend the time to do it. Okay, off the ball is a big one. Okay, many players, and I was one included, think that when you're trying to show yourself, announce yourself to a scout or a club, when you get the ball, it's showtime. Yes, it is, but it's only 50% of the show. A scout or a club will look at you when you don't have the ball just as much. So they're looking to see how do you recover your position? How do you position yourself when the team is in a defensive mode? How do you position yourself when you need to attack? When you're about to receive the ball, what are you doing? Are you looking around? Are you just looking forward? Do you know your next pass? All these little things. So you need to start giving a lot of attention to things like that. Body, body shape, positioning, attacking runs. Are you making the right types of attacking runs? When you defend, are you tracking back on an angle? Are you tracking back to your position? All these little things. And if you're not sure about how you should be doing that stuff, ask your coach. Talk to them. Say, I want to improve my game off the ball. Not when I have it. I want to get better at playing off the ball. Help me. Where do you want me to run when we're defending, when we lose the ball? Where do you want me to run when our midfielder's running through and I'm, I'm attacking? So find these things out. Okay? Soak that in for a bit. So decision making, I think, is probably where football in this country has lacked the most. It's where we've lost most of our creative players because players are taught by most coaches to play two touch. Correctly? Correct, yeah? Most teams you go to, the coach says, two touch, I want two touch. No dribbling, two touch. That's good, but it takes away your ability to make your own decision about whether you should play two touch or whether you should be dribbling. So decision making, believe it or not, is very important to a scout. They do, they, let me tell you now, there's no point having Messi in your team if you tell him to play two touch. What's the point? You've taken away his main weapon. There's no point um, asking a player that has a pretty poor dribbling ability or bad first touch to dribble the ball because it doesn't work. So. As a player, you need to start to be able to learn when to do the right thing. So, decision making. There's a time to press. There's a time to play a long ball. There's a time to play a short ball. I, I saw a saying the other day by a guy named Bob Paisley. He was an old English coach. But he said, it's not about playing a short ball and it's not about playing the long ball. It's about playing the right ball. So what that means, if there is a player running into space and all you need to do is find his feet, but your coach has told you, I don't want to see any long balls. You need to clarify what he means by that because that is the right ball to play at that moment. So you have to start learning to be able to judge when is the right time to do what. Is it the right time to pass long? Is it the right time to play short? Is it the right time to dribble? Is it the right time to be playing two touch? So you've got, to, you've got to learn that through trial and error yourself. It's not going to be easy. But knowing how to do that is what's going to separate you from the rest of the robots out there. Because a robot, I program him, two touch please, no dribbling, bang. Congratulations, you've now got 11 robots on the field. They're not footballers. A footballer knows when I'm going to dribble, when I'm going to pass, when I'm going to play it long, when I'm going to play short, when we're playing two touch. So you need to start to challenge yourself, challenge yourself to start making decisions and wearing the consequences of those decisions. But if it's the right decision, but poorly executed, it's okay. You're not going to execute it right all the time, but as long as you're making the right decision, okay? So as I said, 
there's no point having a Messi in your team if you tell him to play two touch. So what I'm saying to you is just start drilling it into your head. Work out what your skills are, what your attributes are, and find the right time to use them. Yeah? If you're good at dribbling, dribble. Because that's your weapon. It's like the, the talent God has come down and said, boom, here you go. I'm giving you the ability to dribble well. That's your skill. Someone else, I've made you six foot three and I've given you the ability to defend strongly and go into hard challenges. Someone else, I've given you the ability to header well. That's your talent. But a talent is only good if you use it at the right time, in the right scenario. Because if you don't, your talent now becomes your vice, becomes the thing that keeps you back. So it's all about using it at the right time. So, okay. We've had a form slump. Now we've got the opposite problem. We're in great form. Now when you're in good form, you want to maintain it, don't you? Has anyone ever found themselves in a great run of form and now you're panicking? You don't want it to end. How do I keep this going? I don't, I don't want to lose this. This is good. So, yeah. Let me ask you a question. If you are asked to run a 100 metre sprint, right? A race. So you line up. What, what do most players do when they get to the last 10 metres? Slow, Slow down. Yeah, normal. You see the end there, the cone, so usually about 10 metres before the end, you start to slow down, okay? What does an Olympic champion sprinter do in the last 10 metres of a race? They go harder, don't they? They don't slow down, they go harder. So what I'm trying to tell you is, when you're in good form, the way you maintain your form is by training even harder than you were before. So whatever got you into that good form, you've now raised the bar. So to keep that form, it's not, it's not what you want to hear, I know. Because everyone likes to think, I work hard to get to the top, so then I can put my feet up and have a break. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. You work hard to get to the top, and now you've got to work even harder to stay there. Simple as that. So. Most people think I make a million dollars and now I'm going to retire. I guarantee you if you went and checked, took a hundred millionaires and asked them how many of them retired once they made their first million, all hundred of them are still working, trying to make 10 million now. Not, it's not to do with money, it's the attitude, the work ethic. Once you get to somewhere where you want to get to, the only way to stay there is to continue to work. So. The key to maintaining great form, as I said, is to work even harder than you did to get there. So if you find yourself um, as a striker, you're banging in goals left, right and centre, and you want to keep this, then what I would be doing is calling the keeper saying, stay back after training. We used to shoot for 15 minutes, tonight we're shooting for, for 30 minutes or 20 minutes after training. I've got to keep this up. Not only have I got to keep this up, I've got to get better at it. Or if I'm a defender, I'm asking a striker to stay back and practice one-on-ones with me for 20 minutes. So you've got to step it up. So if you, th you find things are good, great, now I've got to step it up. And it kind of, it's going to feel like you're in a never-ending battle. There's no finish line. Because you're thinking to yourself, when do I stop? When do I have a break? Well, the truth of the matter is, if you want to stay at the top, you don't get a break until you retire. You can have a break, but if you do, you've got to understand that once you stop and your, sta and your, your standards drop and the bar is lowered a little, you better make sure you lower your expectations in line with that. So don't expect to be performing where you were. So. Again, one of those things that, probably not what you want to hear, but it's what you need to hear. Yeah? And the other thing, when you're in good form, there's always things that are going to happen that are going to frustrate you. It doesn't matter whether you're in good form or not. You're not immune to frustration. It's going to happen. 
whether it's a referee decisions or uh, a shot that just maybe just misses, uh, but things are going to happen. Your attitude in those moments is what's going to keep you in good form. Because I spoke about this before, about a little gateway act that triggers off a, a different uh, direction. When things are going well, there's always a little thing that happens that if you don't deal with that right and you let it get on top of you, it then completely takes you off track. So when you're in good form, the way you deal with things that happen, you've got to keep your attitude positive. You've got to keep yourself in a growth mindset. How do I keep growing? How do I not let this interfere with what I'm doing? Because the last thing you want to do is all this work to get to good form and then just have a brain snap one day. Look at Zidane, one of the best players to ever play the game. The guy has to know, retire, that his last game for his country, he was sent off for headbutting someone because he had a brain snap. Now, I don't care what anyone says, that guy will never have a peaceful night's sleep until he somehow erases that from his mind. So he's one moment he allowed his brain, his emotions to get on top of him, it completely obliterated. Look, he still had a wonderful career. No one's going to dispute that, but I'm sure it didn't finish the way he wanted. His legacy has been tarnished. So that's why I say to you, it's just because in that moment of frustration, he didn't deal with it in the right way. So it's kind of like you need 24-7 security guards at the gate of your mind. And if any of them decide to take a coffee break, better make sure they have a replacement there because otherwise it can be very costly. All right. Now this one here, I spent a bit of time putting this together and I'm going to need you to stay with me because I'm going to use a chart of a stock, like a stock market, to illustrate something to you about how you look at making progress as a footballer. Okay? I'm going to go through it slow, so if you have questions, ask me, but it's something a little bit different I'm trying, but I think it, it will illustrate the point, okay? So, a lot of players, they seem to go through a mental battle with themselves. I'm not seeing progress, not just footballers, anyone that's trying to pursue something, a goal, a worthy cause, anything. You get into this mental um, battle with yourself where you do something, you make progress, and then you feel like you've gone backwards. I just can't seem to get forward. I make a bit of progress and I come back. So you're just not seeing the progress. Okay? So some of you might be experiencing that. You've been playing football for three, four years, and you just don't feel like you're getting where you want to go. You don't know what it is. You just don't feel like you're you're getting somewhere. So I'm going to teach you about a word tonight called trajectory. Does anyone know what trajectory means? If I say the trajectory of the rocket is going up, what does that mean? Yeah, the motion, the direction, the direction of something. So trajectory means the direction. If I say, Orlando, the trajectory of your grades are good. What, what direction would your grades be going? Oh. Very good. So trajectory is a very important word when you're trying to assess if you're making progress or not, okay? So this is a chart of a stock, okay? For those who don't know what a stock is, it's a company that trades on the stock market. I hope that helps, okay? A stock market is where you can buy shares in a company. So. If it doesn't make sense now, it will one day, I promise. Okay, just stay with me. So what this is saying is this company here, the value of this company, if you wanted to buy shares in this company, in January was worth about $20 if you bought shares in it. By February, it was up to near $40. But then in one day, an announcement came out and everyone got scared and decided to sell their shares in this company and the value of it dropped all the way down to around $12. So it went up $40, and now all of a sudden it's only worth about $12. Would you say this stock is making progress if you looked at it? 
Well, it was worth $40, now it's only worth 12 So do you think it's making progress? Not really. Probably not. You probably wouldn't be rushing to throw more money into this stock. Okay? Next. So what you're basically seeing, if we can convert this to football now, what you're seeing here, a great run of form, yep, and then a dip in form. Bad form all of a sudden. So if I look at this player, or if you look at yourself and say, is this player making progress? Not really. He's gone up, but now he's very low. So looking at it like that, it doesn't look like any progress is being made. Now we're going to look at this over a six-month period. Okay? So over six months, you'll see the stock went up, came back down, but then it went up again. This time it went a little higher than the last time. But then it dropped off again. And then it went up again. This time, a little higher than the last time. So it's kind of like two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. But now we're looking at this over six months. Not just one month or two month period. We're looking at over six months. So next question. Is this stock making positive progress? Is this player making positive progress? He is. Why? Now I'm really going to teach you something about stock market. Does anybody know what these two lines are called? Uh, you're right, Tony. They're called trend lines, but what they represent is this is a line through the lowest points and this is a line through the highest points. So what that's basically saying, if we're going to chart your progress as a player, these are all the best moments of your football season and these are all the lowest. Now what happens is if I've got a texture and coloured that in like one solid block, so now all of a sudden it just looks like one line, would you then say this player is making progress? Yes. He's going straight up. But if you were to just chop this out and go bang, you feel like you're not making progress. If you were to just chop this one out, bang, I'm not making progress. I go up and down. Same one, bang, I'm not making progress. I go up and down. So what I'm trying to tell you is as a player, you need to be able to think about trajectory. Don't worry so much about what's happening in a month or a week. Think about over a season, from where you start to where you finish, have you improved? Have you gone up? Are you at the next level? Because what happens is when you're constantly focusing on the short term, you're always going to have these ups and downs, and it feels like you're not making progress. But if you look at it over the long term, you'll find that you actually are making progress. But it just requires you to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. No one go home and start trading stocks based on this, all right? <laughs> That's my disclaimer. <laughs> so, next one. So what I want to finish on this point with, guys, is stop expecting to see this. This doesn't happen in the stock market and it doesn't happen in your performance. So stop expecting you to have week after week after week after week that's just perfect, perfect growth, growth, growth. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen in a company. No company makes more money every month, non-stop, forever. They'll have a, a month where they make money, a month where maybe not so much, then the next month more, just like that graph. And like in your performance, you're going to have weeks where maybe two or three games in a row, unbelievable form, up, up, up. Then you go through two weeks where it's not so much, down, down, or maybe just flat. But then what you've got to understand is from that point, you then got to go higher than where you were originally. Take your game up to the next level. And you're going to expect to come back. But what happens is where you come back the next time is maybe in line with the highest point of the last one. And then you go up even higher. And at the end of the season, 
You look at your performance and you say, over the course of the season, I had a lot of ups and downs, but the direction, the trajectory was up. And if you get to the end of the season every year and say, you finish with an upward trajectory, that's what you want to see. So, good, great, poor, bad form, it's inevitable. As I just said, it's inevitable. You can't stop it. It's going to happen. But just concentrate on getting your trajectory right and the rest takes care of itself. Okay? A good friend of mine, a good mentor said to me, Fabian, when you're investing, this is not investing advice, by the way, but don't worry so much about hitting the target. Worry about getting the direction right. You don't have to get the exact location or the exact pinpoint right. Just get the trajectory right and you'll be okay. So that's one thing that stuck to me and I've tried to translate that into football. All right. One story to finish off. I just need a drink of water. Did that confuse you? Anyone that was thinking of doing finances now no longer doing it? All right. I've got one closing story that's going to illustrate this point about not seeing progress. The bamboo tree. Okay, in the Far East, they have what they call the Chinese bamboo tree. Now, the Chinese bamboo tree takes five years to grow. But there's a process in growing this tree. That's all right. So, I thought it was my wife checking up on me because that's her ringtone. So it takes five years to grow the bamboo tree. Okay? But in this process, you need to water it, you need to fertilize the ground every day for five years. You cannot miss a day. Every day, they go out into the farm, they fertilize the ground, they make sure it's good, they put the water in, five years. You don't see anything. After five years, the bamboo tree then pierces through the soil. Then what happens in the next, 90, uh, the next five weeks, that bamboo tree will grow 90 feet tall. Now my question to you is, did that bamboo tree grow 90 feet in five weeks or in five years and five weeks? The answer is five years and five weeks because if at any point in those five years they decided not to fertilize the ground or not to water it, the tree would have died. So every little day leading up to that five years and five weeks, played a part in that tree growing. And if they didn't, the tree never would have grown. But while I'm telling you this, a lot of you right now are growing your bamboo tree. And people are coming up to you saying, what are you doing there? Where it is you're growing a bamboo tree? Where is it? You've been at this for three or four years. What's going on? Where's your tree? What do you have to show for it? So some of you maybe are starting to doubt yourself. And it may not just be in football, it could be in anything. People are starting to maybe mock you, laugh at you. You've been at this for quite some time now. Where is it? Ah, oh, you're growing one of those bamboo trees, are you? Ah, oh, yeah, I've heard about them. What's going to happen is if you continue to put the work in, something is going to grow. Okay? And usually when it grows, it grows. It grows exponentially. But it will only happen if you continue to nourish it for those five years. Because if you decide somewhere along the point, you know what, I'm not seeing any progress. This is not worth it. I've busted my backside, I'm not getting anywhere, I keep getting overlooked, no one's giving me the time of day, everyone makes fun of me, uh, people are telling me I should quit this and just focus on doing this and that. Blah, 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 blah. Keep watering, keep nourishing, keep fertilizing. Do the distance, see what happens. If at the end of it, you still think, you know what, it's not for me, then do it. But go out on your terms. Don't go out because you've quit. Go out because you've decided it's no longer what you want. Not because you don't feel you can do it. Always go out on your own terms. So 
I wanted to tell you that story because it really struck a chord with me as well. Okay, so maybe it's worth keeping a picture of a bamboo tree around to keep you to, to remind you that, you know, there's a process involved in becoming successful and you can't shortcut the process. There's a lot of work that goes without reward in the beginning, but it's part of the process. It's grooming you for success because if you're not groomed for success, when you get it, you usually lose it. So understand that to get to where you want to go, whether it's in football or anything, there's a process that you need to respect. And usually it's about doing a lot of work, a lot of grind without any reward, without any recognition, with, by being mocked by people, being laughed at, told that you're a fool, you're wasting your time. When you start to hear those voices, that's a good sign. It means you must be on the right track. That's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just a thanks to Louise who volunteered to help me flip the slides. <laughs> <laughs>